take responsibility for the nation you're living in and look for the best for that nation in all over the world governments are not finding majorities in this year i've seen so many elections in which there are no overall majority because people are not supporting one party unfortunately in the us you don't have that option you don't have an option of a coalition if you had a coalition of the best people to run the country so that Republicans would include Democrats and Democrats would include the best Republicans, then you would have a much better system, which would get a much better consensus for the benefit of everyone in the nation. But it isn't going to happen. European countries that I've seen this year, India as well, they didn't get an overall majority. They had to form a coalition government. There are lots. And I think it's an indication to me that it's a sign that people are getting disillusioned with the system and the system isn't working because actually they're not voting one party in and so many smaller parties who have sort of their interests start to form governments now i think it's probably a safer form of government because you're going to get less extremes in coalitions and even in places like germany italy they're all they all form coalition governments france is having to form a coalition government yeah so i think some things are happening in the political arena which is an indication that people are beginning maybe to wake up so in the u.s um in one week there's going to be the presidential election <laughs> yep <laughs> now there was a huge two huge events that happened this week and i'd like to share and just get your thoughts on so former President Donald Trump sat on Friday with Joe Rogan. And mm -hmm. the Joe Rogan experience is the largest podcast in the world, okay? Like, it, it reaches everywhere. And so it was quite remarkable. It was a three-hour sitting. And, uh, uh, you know, and it broke all the records, right, with views and whatnot. So, you know, that's happening. And then, and then on Sunday, the greatest arena in the world, sports arena, mm -hmm you know, for basketball games, indoor arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City, uh, former President Donald Trump filled, filled the place and there were lines all the way around New York. So something unusual is happening in, in the U.S. for this election. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of energy regarding it and, and a desire for people to see, see great change, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the the one of the things that I saw was that once this happens with Joe Rogan, like I, I actually saw this was going to happen a while ago, that there was going to be a huge, huge shift. Uh, he, and, and it happened and it, it really, and I was reminded of it. I had forgotten about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I feel like it's as significant as what happened. And I'm not sure how it's going to play out, but I, I, I just want to get your sense because I know we've talked about, uh, you know, the control systems of the world, you know, some of these Luciferian control systems mm -hmm. around the world. And I feel mm -hmm. as if this has something to do with some of these systems coming down in the same way. There was a huge shift in the church with COVID where mm -hmm. the church has left the building mm -hmm. and um, God is working in and through sons in, in this, like what you teach, Mike, mm -hmm. um, in engaging God face-to-face -face intimacy um, where there is this overlap of heaven and earth more and, the, and it's wide open like suns are rising the joshua generation but i feel like this is all part of it to set that other part of it you know jesus said beware the the leaven of mm -hmm. herod beware the leaven of the pharisees that that pharisaical uh mm -hmm. religious spirit you know, in a lot of ways has been broken and is still being dismantled. And I feel like something major is shifting in the governmental realm. And I just wanted to get what your thoughts are on that. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Uh, <laughs> my apology. Obviously, I, from my perspective, I don't believe God is partisan in that God doesn't support any party. God is God. He... Yes. His government is the kingdom of God. We have come up with the best or worst of versions of a earthly governmental system. 
And God works within the systems that we create. He didn't create them. But they're all, in a sense, we have earthly government, obviously because there is kingdom government in heaven. And there's a sense where lots of things on earth have tried to copy the things of heaven without being a reflection of what's in heaven. So they've copied a governmental system of kingdom and created kings or presidents or prime ministers or whatever version of it or tyrants or, you know, all sorts of different things. Now, I don't believe God supports that system because I believe that system has come from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But we live within it. And obviously, we want the best system we can have within the context of the life we live to enable us to be happy, successful, prosperous or whatever else. Um, now, that being said, when I look at any political system, whether it be left wing, white wing, right wing centered, you know, it's all coming from the same source. And I don't believe that source ultimately is going to provide any answers or the answers to solve the world's problems because it's basically coming out of the wrong source of knowledge. God wants his kingdom to fill the earth and be established on earth as it is in heaven. And as sons of the kingdom, our responsibility is to outwork his kingdom. Now, when it comes to the political system, are there going to be shakings of political systems so that people's trust in those political systems may be coming to an end so they'll be looking for a different political system yeah i think that's true i think the same would be in the financial system the same would be in the health system whatever it might be whatever we've created is only a pale imitation and substitute for what god's kingdom is so the only answer is really going to be found in the spiritual dimension that is outworked in the kingdom of God, which has a physical outworking. Hence, health and wholeness and sozo, abundant life and zoe life and all of that type of dynamic. Um, so when it comes then to an election, you have people from who are Christians who would be supporting both sides of a an election and claiming that they're doing that on behalf of God. I don't I do believe God can you can ask him which way he you wants you to vote and he might tell you. And if he does tell you, that doesn't mean that he supports the party that he's asking you to vote for. It just means that he has some purpose in you voting that way. Whenever I've asked him what party to vote in recent times, he's basically said, vote for whichever party you'd like to vote for. Which gives me the freedom to do whatever I want in that sense. But when it comes to a political system and a party is voted in, whichever party it is, whether you support them or don't support them before the election, you should certainly support them after the election. Because we are there to help have a government of peace, in peace, not in conflict, in war, in division and divisiveness and strife and enmity, which is what happens when you get a political system that divides a country in half and the other half that lost the vote are angry at losing the vote and won't support the people who won the vote so you get a divided country for the next four years until the next presidential election when you'll get another divided country unless something changes now what might change is if people actually view the system as flawed that it won't actually be the salvation of for their problems and that god only is so it may be that these systems may have to shake somewhat and for people to actually see the absurdity of the actual system itself, you know, which is is basically based on people. Now, we get what we vote for. And I know people would take 
the thing looking in the bible and saying well the in the old testament it says that god appoints kings and they must be his appointees and that stuff well i don't believe it actually says that the way they're saying it and it says in other things that god doesn't appoint them at all so in that view if you believe that whoever wins the election is god's appointment then that will change your way of looking at it. Now, if you do believe that and the other side wins that you didn't vote for, then you should certainly support the government that's in place because you believe God put them there. But actually, people who do believe that God appoints people don't only believe that really when they when the people they want get in. Then they they get the others will be robbed or whatever they like to say. And so that it's very much cherry picking the things that you like until uh, it fits your way of thinking. Then when it doesn't fit your way of thinking, you suddenly think, oh, God didn't put that person in at all. So I'm not supporting them. And I think that's not really a good way of being there and having a higher purpose in it. Um, so I know some People that I know are Republicans. Some people I know are Democrats. What I do know is that they struggle to get on. <laughs> and they would, some of them would call the other people they couldn't even possibly believe that could be Christian Democrats or Christian Republicans. It's so divisive that we've got to be so careful how we tread on this sort of eggshell situation really and so i'm not gonna come with any political opinion or any view i would say when it comes to an election ask god and if he doesn't tell you what to do vote according to your conscience but be careful that you're not voting selfishly you know and that's what i've seen some people's view is based on a very specific point of law or a very selfish view of who's going to give them the most money in their pocket. Now, is that really the right way to vote? Or should we be looking at what is going to benefit the most people the most? And making our decision based on who is going to look after the most people for the most of the time, whether it benefits me totally or not. And I think that's very difficult to do when you have a political opinion, whether it be right wing or left wing or center. And when it comes to this dynamic, if God is doing something within what is going on at the moment, when the result comes out, what will it will it contradict that or will it affirm that i don't know depends what you think he's doing you know do you think he's shaking up the system or do you think he's engineering the result i don't think god engineers results i think people engineer the results and i think there is so much misinformation disinformation lies damn lies and even more lies around an election sphere that you can't trust what anyone says really unless you see it for yourself in person because there's so many deep fakes out there that have been done for jokes but some of them been done for nefarious purposes to swing and sway the election that you can't trust that so what is the truth well, we need to learn to be discerning of the truth because we know the truth as a person that will help us understand the truth that we hear or don't hear when someone speaks. And both sides of the political sphere will say things which aren't true. You know, I don't think there are too many Haitian cat people eating cats and dogs so and so. But it was said, well, where did it come from? Some rumor somewhere, probably from someone who's quite xenophobic, who doesn't like immigrants, who spread rumors. Are they really eating dogs and cats? Probably not. 
you know, but it became a political point of issue. From one side it being said and the other side incredulous that it was being said. Now, you've got this stuff happening all the time. And, you know, what's behind it? You know, you could say the religious and political spirit or Luciferian agenda for governmental systems which are not God's kingdom. And whoever wins this government, they are not going to be operating in God's kingdom. You know, and you get huge different things happening. So you've got this thing going on in New York. You've got the, yeah, the podcast, whatever. Then you've got yesterday a thousand Christians or a thousand denominational leaders supporting the other side. Coming out on Harris's side. Then you've got the whole prophetic movement coming out on Trump's side. So then the whole Christian church is already divided because they're already supporting uh, different parties. And I think I don't think personally, I would never try and influence anyone's vote from the pulpit or from a podcast or anything else, because it's not my position to tell someone which way to vote or not. And therefore, I keep my personal vote private. And I never tell anyone which way I'm voting because I don't believe it's my position to influence them. Now, that's not the case within the church because the political and religious spirit, I believe, is working together. So you've got people who are trying to sway people's votes from the pulpit. Now, personally, I don't think that is a good thing. I think you can encourage people to vote to use their vote, to use their vote wisely. But as soon as you start telling people which side to vote, effectively you are controlling them. And I don't think that is how it is intended to be, but it happens. So the situation, you know, some of the things, you know, from the other side of the pond, and we, we look at some of the things that are being said and some of the things that are purported to be said, and you just like look on because it doesn't happen in our political system like that. You know, it, it's just, you know, we have an opposition who sort of oppose some of the things the government do if they don't think they're right. But we don't have this conflict and, well, who cares about the country? We're just going to beat each other up politically, you know, and I, and I just don't think that is God's intention. You know, God is a God of peace, so he doesn't want war. He doesn't want enmity. He doesn't want strife. And you've got that from, from within Christian people supposedly brothers and sisters who are at enmity with each other over supporting a different side of the argument in this political divide which you know is not good so you know i gotta be careful what i say because i don't want to influence anybody and i don't want to come over in any way supporting or one side or the other you know i think if you're going to vote i should think you should look at character in the person that you're thinking of voting do they reflect the character of the fruit of the spirit in any way love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness i think that should be something that perhaps might influence you if you're looking at supporting somebody do they reflect any of the characteristics that god might have on display you know if you want sort of well what how do i make a decision you know, if God doesn't tell you which way, it's, you know, well, what, what should you decide on? Policies alone? The person? The personality? The character? You know, how do you make a choice? And, you know, I think everyone has to make their own decision based on what is most important to them. And from that perspective, then I think they vote and when the result comes in i believe that they should support whoever wins pray for them look to see a government which brings about peace in every way and you know be be looking at it in that way from through the lens of love you know rather than what happened last time you know and what happened the time before and all this stuff i mean you know at the end of the day 40 years ago you didn't have it so divisive it is now 
So something has changed. Can God use the fact that this doesn't work and that hopefully people will become disillusioned with the way it is and start actually challenging the system? Because unless you challenge the system, the system will just carry on. Now, what is the way to challenge the system? Well, some people would say, well, get involved in the system, become a politician, and try and change it. Well, power corrupts. Absolute power supposedly corrupts absolutely is a phrase I've heard said. Um, so you've got to be very, very strong to be in the political arena and keep integrity um, in that way. Now, I'm sure there are lots of people who do. You know, but personally, I don't think God wants us to try and restore a system that he didn't create, create, but to have a different governmental system, a heavenly government on earth operating. Obviously, that's not going to happen tomorrow. It will happen as more and more people embrace the relationship with god that transforms their lives for them to operate as light in the earth and to operate bringing peace and love into the earth until they are the majority and more and more people will be be operating in love therefore the world will change when the people in the world change the world won't change just because we change a political system whether we adopt a communist system, a democratic system, a republican system, whatever it might be, it is still run by people who are flawed people. And I don't think I'm going to put my trust in the political system to change the world, to make it a better place. It can do some good things. It has done. It ended slavery. It did. You know, there's good things that happen. But you needed a war to end slavery. And even then it didn't end. You know, so it's like it's not an easy thing to bring about change because it's the people operating out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that create the dynamics that you want to change. And unless the people change, law doesn't change them. If if just having a law based system changed everything, well, you wouldn't have your prisons overrun, would you? Because they would respect the law, but they don't respect the law. So it just providing a law that says you can't do this and you can't do that doesn't change people. Only God can change people. So they operate out of love rather than selfishness. So the more and more people that change, the more and more the world will change. And the maybe then the political systems that we operate will actually operate differently or we won't need them at all when the kingdom of god has filled the earth there won't be a political system there will just be god's kingdom and all of us in a relationship with god in covenant with one another loving one another that might seem utopia <laughs> but actually it is what the kingdom of god is all about it's what jesus said love one another as i've loved you you know now that is really what we should be doing as Christians, when we look at the political arena, we should love one another. So Democrats, hopefully, would be rejoicing that Trump didn't get shot and die. Because they should respect God's love for Donald Trump, even if they don't feel that they could agree with him politically. God loves him. He's a child of God. Harris is a child of God. God loves her. So if we don't love her and love him, then we're not operating like God in this situation. And that is why we've got to change our heart towards people in these type of situations. And if Donald Trump wins, I would want God to try and work in that guy's life for him to begin to operate in a godly way with godly character and love and the same for harris it's like i want them to find a relationship with god you know that will actually bring about a change in their life and maybe in what they do in the country 
but I don't hold that much hope for the system itself. But God can certainly change people and use people in situations. But he's not partisan. And I don't believe that, you know, he's supporting the Republicans or the Democrats in this situation. And I don't believe it's a one issue thing that we should be looking at abortion as the only issue when making a governmental choice. Because there are so many more issues than that. And if you if you're pro life, be pro life for everybody, not just for babies. That means no death penalty either. And I don't think what I've seen in pro life people is their very Old Testament in their pro life view, in that they still believe that someone's life should be taken away from them, because they believe that's what God does. God does not do that. That law-based system was set up by man, not God. God cannot tell you not to kill and then kill people. That's hypocritical. So there are lots of things we should be looking at, not just one issue and basing our decision on one issue. And what I've seen is, those people that base their decision on that issue will overlook all the other things that they would in other in any other way think were terrible but they will still base it on one issue and i don't think that's the issue or any issue should be one issue that makes you choose which way to vote you know so yeah you know, take responsibility for the nation you're living in and look for the best for that nation in all over the world, governments are not finding majorities. In this year, I've seen so many elections in which there are no overall majority because people are not supporting one party. Unfortunately, in the US, you don't have that option. You don't have an option of a coalition. If you had a coalition of the best people to run the country, so that Republicans would include Democrats and Democrats would include the best Republicans, then you would have a much better system, which would get a much better consensus for the benefit of everyone in the nation. But it isn't going to happen. You know, it is happening in other nations who don't have first past the post things. And in your situation, you could have the majority of the people in the country voting for one guy. And the other guy get in all because of five or six win states. So it isn't even the most popular person gets in. Because it's obviously not based, you know, on just the number of votes. And it isn't in our country either. You know, we vote for MPs to be voted in. And the most num MPs have the parliament running by that party who had the most number of MPs. So we could have a coalition and we have had a coalition in previous last 20 years. It didn't work, but we did have one. But European countries that I've seen this year, India as well, they didn't get an overall majority. They had to form a coalition government. There are lots. And I think it's an indication to me that it's a sign that people are getting disillusioned with the system. And the system isn't working because actually they're not voting one party in. And so many smaller parties who have sort of their interests start to form governments. Now, I think it's probably a safer form of government because you're going to get less extremes in coalitions. And even in places like Germany, Italy, they're all they all form coalition governments. France is having to form a coalition government, you know, because they they came together to stop a right wing government coming in. Very right wing. And in Europe, obviously, we have a history of national socialism, which is essentially national fascism. You know, and we saw what that did. Yeah, so I think some things are happening in the political arena, which is an indication that people are beginning maybe to wake up. I'm not sure that's totally happening in the US yet. But I hope it does. <laughs> and I hope people start to think differently about how it works um yeah well I, I would say mike those are thank you for that um answer and and i couldn't agree more 
because there is so much division and it does cut 50 50 and mm. it has become much more polarizing and like you really dislike the other side and it's not it's not at all how god would outwork a government where it's for all the people yeah. one of the good things that i see coming out and what you talked about is a coalition and um and one one particular thing that i know is like and you're speaking on immortality coming up mm. at just with justin and divine health is is just is more um bringing forth the atmosphere of healing and health and wholeness and the food supply and people living um, healthier, a healthier mm -hmm. lifestyle. Um, one of one of the one of the parties involved was always on the other side and has, and has joined to try to make um, I think they call it make America healthy again. Mm -hmm. So that is a positive outworking of yeah. of what, what God wants to see for His Son, so that we could live in divine health, live with yeah. longevity and not have things, not have disease or poisons in our food supply come at us. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, um, you know, environmental things like that. Um, yeah. Because you know, it was kind of unusual. This, this person is from the Kennedy family and was always on the other side. And so there are, there are, there are that's that's what's happening. There are a lot of shifts going on that are remarkable that haven't been seen before that you can tell people aren't, aren't happy with the way things have been. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, you want a government of the people for the people. That's what your government is supposed to be. It seemingly in over the last 40 years or so has gone away from that. It seems to be just a government for the party, for their policies, whether it, it affects people positively or negatively or neutrally. It just seems to have gone away from actually these people voted us in. We're here and are accountable to them to make sure that they are looked after whether that be healthily with jobs or whatever else um it just seems that it's become very self-centered benefiting those that have the most the most therefore the political system is influenced by the ones who've got the most money i mean you even had elon musk who's a south african offering a million dollars to anyone who would sign up and vote for well he wants to vote for the republicans of course but he couldn't say that specifically but it's like well to me that's interference i mean it's like you got the richest man in the world suddenly trying to influence your election and he's not even an american so that that to me is not a good thing you know so ultimately you know, I do believe there are issues of environment, you know, looking after the planet, looking after the people, which are the should be the priorities, not making more people rich. Who already are more rich than they would ever could ever spend. You know, so what is it? One percent of the people have, I think. Over 90 percent of the wealth. I don't think that is actually how it should be. Um, and I'm not talking about sharing the wealth and spreading it all out and all that stuff. But I think the system has been favored to those who have the money. I mean, how has there ever been a U.S. president who didn't have money? When was the last poor president you ever had? Did you ever have one? I'm not really sure. But certainly not in the last hundred years, that's for sure. So, so it's only those who are rich who are actually getting into those positions, supported by who? The rich. So there's sort of a, a lot of nepotism within it. And there's a lot of stuff which is, to me, doesn't look good and doesn't feel good. And therefore, I don't think is good. But that's the system you've got. So I think 
I would what, like to see politicians who do want to be supporting the people of the country they live in rather than the big businesses or the corporations or everything else. Therefore, people's health and well-being, I think, should be the factor. So a well-being economy rather than a productivity economy, I think, would more reflect God's heart. The last potential president that you had who promoted the well-being economy in the 60s was assassinated. You know, and you can still find some videos on YouTube of um, Robert Kennedy basically promoting the well-being economy, looking to change productivity as the driving force for the economy. He was assassinated. Whether he was killed over that one issue alone, I don't know. But it's certainly suspicious that someone who was looking to change the political system for the benefit of everybody and for their well-being rather than just making more people money didn't even get to run for president. You know, now I think those there are some governments around the world who have adopted a well-being economy agenda, but they're only a, they're not the US, they're not Britain, although I think Scotland does as part of Britain and uh, New Zealand, I think some of the Scandinavian countries who are looking and thinking, what are we doing? You know, we are ruining the planet, ruining people's lives. What for to make people rich? So I do believe that actually a well-being economy would change things to benefit more people for more of the time. And therefore, health and immortality would be certainly part of that. Now, I don't know how much of this is true, but I, I read about the when they first introduced corn syrup into the U.S. food system and how it was marketed as the solution to everyone's problems. Corn syrup is basically produce obesity throughout the world. But someone made a lot of money out of corn syrup and it was promoted by advertising to be a healthy option. And I think there are things like advertising companies who make money promoting products which are unhealthy. I mean, look at your epidemic of opioid addiction and those that made all the money out of promoting addiction on the thing of this is safe and it's non-addictive when he looks at oxycodone and other things i mean you know i've looked at the movies or, or tv series about it and obviously people were prosecuted or whatever else but it's still going on people are making money out of making other people sick well that's the sort of thing that should be addressed in government but who's taking the backhanders in potentially those who make decisions on what drugs and how much they're charging and all of that stuff? You know, it's, it's a massive scandal in the pharmaceutical thing, which is not trying to make people well. It's just trying to make people more money at the benefit of other people while they keep them sick. So I definitely believe this needs to be a change. That change won't come about until the governments are not influenced by those who have the most money and the most lobbying power so you know so yeah i would love to see a, a well-being economy looking out for the health of the nation and changing things to help people live more healthily and live longer and eventually if they live longer finding god and finding healthy mortality you know, um, you know, so it's it's not an not an easy world we live in. And it's becoming harder and harder for people to know the truth. I mean, if you saw something on the TV for 50 years ago, 40 years ago, even 30 years ago, you would think what you were looking at was absolutely the truth because you're seeing it 
on your screen and someone's reporting on it. Now, the people who are reporting of the news are making the news and they're deciding what is news. And what you see, you can't believe your own eyes anymore unless you were there in person. And I think that is a very dangerous situation in that there are a lot of people who are not discerning enough to actually see what the truth is. Therefore, they believe what they're being told and what they're being fed as true when it isn't true. You know, and you've got that even. I mean, there's so much political points being tried to be scored. Over people's lives who are being damaged. You know, you had your hurricane, terrible hurricane down in North Carolina and all those things. And people were trying to make political points over it. And I and sadly, I don't think most people will go and find out what is true or do their own fact checking on what is true. They just listen to what's being said. You know, and I don't think that is what we should be doing as believers. We should be looking at the truth, which is Jesus, spending enough time with the truth to be discerning of what is true. So I never take what I'm hearing and accept it being true or not true. If it's important to me, I will fact check it with God primarily. I might do some of my own research, but even that is harder and harder to do to find out what is actually true because who knows what you're reading is true. You know, so God is the best source of information when it comes to what is true. And the more time you know what the frequency of truth, you spend time with that frequency. And then when you hear something, you discern the frequency of love and truth on it. That will help you. You know, and it isn't one side or the other, it's both sides who do the same thing. You know, and you know, we need to rise above it all, and we need to go into a realm where the truth is in a relationship which enables us to be discerning because we've practiced training our senses to discern what is good and evil. And I don't think enough people have practiced training their senses and therefore they're gullible to believe a lot of what's being said, which is targeting them at their agendas. I mean, marketplace stuff, social media, it is targeting people to buy things because it's listening two conversations and all of the stuff yeah and you get targeted marketing you get targeted political statements so you had political statements being put out by certain people that actually said the opposite they said the absolute opposite things to one audience to the other audience but they were put out by the same political party and they were saying to about the other party, this person is this, this person is that. And I think it was to do with actually the Middle East situation. So they were targeting Muslims saying this person was anti-Muslim. They were pro-Israel. They were targeting Jewish people. This person is pro-Palestinian. And it was put out by the same party saying the other person was uh, targeting that. Now, that is just totally disingenuous and is absolutely not how a political party should operate. There is no integrity in doing that at all. They just want to win at all costs. And I don't think that is the way we should operate as believers. We should be looking at the truth and focused on what is the truth. And there is truth in both sides of every argument. And there is truth and good things in both parties. But you're not going to get it because they won't come together on a higher agenda of we'll support these good positive things that you're doing. If you support these good positive things that we're doing, it just doesn't happen, does it?
you know, sadly. Um, but I would hope that change would eventually be driven from grassroots, from people who say enough's enough. We're just not playing this game anymore. We're not we're not agreeing to this system anymore. Now, how you would do that? I don't know. But change has happened politically in history from people rising up and saying, we're not having this any longer. You know, I mean, who would have thought the actual, you know, the Iron Curtain would come down and the Berlin Wall would come down? No one thought that was possible. But individuals began to promote change supported by the grassroots who were behind change and eventually change happened i mean i would have never imagined the berlin wall would come down in my lifetime you know well now i'm going to live forever so I, you know from that sense it's like it would anyway but you know back then it was a huge shock that essentially communism fell but now what have we got something worse probably that says it's democratic, but actually isn't, and operates the way it does. So, you know, things can get hijacked. So we've got to have the right people who bring about the right change for the right reasons. And that's why we need to look to people with character and integrity rather than look at charisma or money. You know, do they have the right character and are they operating with integrity then yeah. so yeah not a not an easy situation you're all facing we've had our election it's all over <laughs> so we've now got another five years now of maybe hopefully things changing um but you know we're we're in a difficult economic situation as like many countries are and hard decisions have to be made, you know. But you know, when you offer people more money in their pocket, rather than, well, how can we benefit the whole of the nation and people vote on basically what's going to make them more money or give them more money to spend, then, you know, I don't think that's voting with integrity, personally. That's not my motivation when I vote. You know, I, I look at, what will make this nation a better place for the majority of the people who are living in it or hopefully for everyone who's living in it you know but i'm not an i i'm not a you know idealist in the sense of i realize that that is not something that's just going to happen overnight you know I, I i am very optimistic because i believe god's kingdom will fill the earth yes i realize it's going to take time and I love that word for the increase of his government yeah. and there peace. Yeah, there will there be is. no end. And so what do we do to align with that and to infuse that within our government systems, you think, Mike? Or is it does it have to be a complete teardown or do you think it'll be a, a transition? Well, I, I always hope for transition rather than revolution. <laughs> because, you know, a lot of people get hurt in revolution. Yes transition is a more peaceful way of doing things but i'm not totally convinced always that transition brings about change if people don't want the change what will cause people to want the change well they're not happy with the present situation other than a more uh philanthropic view of well i want to see the world a better place you know um but most people aren't really looking that way so ultimately, do I believe things will just change? I think there will be some shakings that promote people to look for a different solution rather than, you know, perpetuating the same. But it's people will, will eventually bring the change. You know, if, you know, if, if 250 million people in the U.S. suddenly found an intimate relationship with God as Father, things would change. You know, because those people would demand change and they would be agents of change. They would change how they treat people, you know, and then other people being treated differently would 
treat other people differently you know so ultimately i think you know i'm not optimistic of a political solution but i am optimistic of god's kingdom eventually through transforming people's lives changing the world hopefully transitionally but there may well be some little bumps in the road that cause people to start looking at different solutions to their life you know i mean i think if you think the government is going to solve all your problems i think you're you know you're looking really in the wrong place you know because has it ever solved everyone's problems not really no um so let's let's actually give them a role that they have to make sure there's an infrastructure in the nation that can support well-being but they're not there to control people's lives and they're not there to make money for other people either you know um and the danger is with one person in charge who knows what can happen you know that that to me is a dangerous see we have a prime minister who's not in charge he's only in charge of his own government <laughs> you know therefore they can vote him out you know if he starts doing like boris johnson they got rid of him when he started eventually all things got uncovered with all the stuff he was doing you know and eventually they got rid of him you know and now they got rid of somebody else and now they got rid of someone else and now they're getting rid of somebody else you know so you know it didn't last very long you know so ultimately one person with all the authority i think is a dangerous situation you know now our prime minister does not have the power all the mps have to vote he cannot and you do have i know house of representatives and you know the senate and all that stuff so you do have things in place but there still is a lot of lot of power invested in a person which has the potential to be good or it could have the potential to be disastrous you know so you do really want the right person but who is the right person and i don't think there is an ideal person you know that you got to vote for so good luck <laughs> i don't envy you uh, the situation i just i think you know as we should be looking for peace peaceful transition without what happened last time to divide the nation even further you want things to come together you know not be driven more and more apart yeah so, yeah not easy and you know and i'm just giving my opinion you know it's like i'm not got an axe to grind in the situation and i've certainly got no skin in the game in that sense um i don't get to vote um you know i would just want people to be discerning and you know to to, to be able to find out what is the truth and not be swayed by lies and propaganda and you know all that stuff which just goes on in the it's just you know the, the political arena is like a pigsty isn't it everyone's dirty in it not not corrupt but just it's just not a it's a stink you know it just feels like it stinks it really just stinks and and yeah you know it didn't used to as much as it does today <laughs> you know so i i pray for you i i want the best that can come out of this hopefully a peaceful transition and solution to it all and hopefully things will change but i can't say i'm hugely optimistic for political change solving the world's problems really anyway there we go mm. wow that was powerful i really love yeah. everything you guys are talking about we love you guys and uh, we are ambassadors of love and we, we believe that this generation needs to hear the yeah. truth, Jesus, and um, we are promoting love and that's really what's changed our lives. And so so mm -hmm. I thank you guys for that.
<clears throat> I thank God and to Jesus. And let's just get yeah. forward. I mean, I think that should be what, as followers of Jesus, yeah. love one another as I've loved you. It should be the highest agenda that we have. Yes, yes. To love one another, even if we disagree. Yeah. Whether we disagree politically, whether we disagree in so many different areas, love should be the higher agenda and call. And if it was, things would be different. Yeah. You know, and actually, it seems in the last election, Christians were no better than anybody else. Yeah. In vilifying and, you know, and it just wasn't good. And I think we need to rise above that and demonstrate love. Yes. For those we disagree with. Yeah. You know, yes. Because that will change things. You know, because Jesus said it would. Yeah. How would the world know that we're his disciples for our love for one another? And that doesn't exclude the world because Jesus came to save the world. He didn't come to save a little bit of the world. It was the whole world. And therefore, we need to love everybody, whether they're a different color, they speak a different language. Whatever differences there are, nothing should actually be higher than love. And therefore, love can therefore bring about unity and union. But only love can do it. You know, therefore, we need to be loved. You know, more and more believers need to know that they're loved unconditionally so that they then can choose to love each other and the world and their neighbor because we're supposed to love our neighbor and our neighbor may be a different color or come from a different country or be an immigrant or be whatever. Let's face it, most of the people in America are immigrants. There aren't that many natives, you know. <laughs> So most people are immigrants one way or another, going back in a few generations. So, you know, let's love each other. Whatever our background or wherever we may have come from, let's choose to love one another because that is the higher law. You know, that is what will change things ultimately if we choose to love one another. And Jesus said, you know, if... If love your enemies we shouldn't have enemies from our perspective but if people feel that they're our enemies we should still love them forgive them and want to bless them and i think that is what love really is can you want the best for someone who does not love you it's a challenge but actually that's what jesus did for those who put him on a cross, political and religious, Father, forgive them. And I think that is what love does. Love forgives, no matter what. And I think that would change things if more and more people who say that they're followers of Jesus actually followed him by doing what he said in loving one another and loving their neighbor as themselves. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.